Welcome to the first example video for chapter four. We're going to see a very different overall feel for the chapter four problems compared to what we had seen in chapters two and three. Back in the kinematics chapters, both in one dimension for chapter two and in two dimensions for chapter three, we were focused on a problem solving process that had us asking the question, find something when something else is true. Find t when y equals zero, find v when x equals 50, things like that. And that was what we used in order to help us figure out what equation to use. In this chapter, however, we actually only have one primary equation that will always be used. And that equation is F net equals MA. The forces are vectors and the acceleration is a vector. And that is going to be our tool every single time we have a chapter four problem. And so instead, the part that we need to focus our efforts on when we are setting up a problem is making sure that we've figured out what forces we have acting and in what direction those forces point. So we'll see a very similar problem solving process, but with a different focus on what the key sticking points would be and where to put our efforts in especially. Okay, so let's draw a picture. We have a lightweight rope attached to a 50 pound block, 50 pound block. Now we always, always want to pay attention to units. One pound is equivalent to 4.45 Newtons. And so we are going to want to turn this into Newtons, but we already have, this is the weight already. It is not the mass. So that's something to be aware of as we move for forward through the problem. All right, it's suspended on this rope, so it's not touching the ground or a table. Right away, that tells us that there will not be a normal force. Normal means perpendicular, and it's perpendicular to a surface. There is not going to be a normal force if there is not a surface that we're touching. And a 250 Newton tension force is used to lift the box. All right, so let's draw our free body diagram. So this is our force diagram or free body diagram. We have just a central dot or square for our object. And now we draw in the forces involved. We're told that there is a 250 Newton pull force, applied force, whatever you want to call it. The key part is that it's pulling the block upwards, 250 Newtons. And we were told that we have the weight, so the force of gravity is 50 pounds. But if we want to turn that into Newtons, one pound is equal to 4.45 Newtons. And we end up with 222.5 Newtons. That is the force of gravity. So part A, we're specifically asked to draw the free body diagram. This should, however, be something that you do in every single chapter four and chapter five problem, even when it is not specifically requested. Okay, so now we're trying to find the acceleration. That means that we're using this tool. So if we go back to our general problem solving strategy, step one is drawing a picture. Now in chapter two, uh, sorry, in chapter four, we have two pictures, the real picture, and the free body diagram. Our step two of our regular problem solving process was to write down our given information. So the pull force up, the force of gravity down, that's information that we've kind of put into our drawing. Step three is to identify the unknown. So we're trying to find the acceleration. Step four is to identify the equation. That one's going to be the easiest step for us here in chapter four because it's always going to be Newton's second law. And then step five is to plug in numbers. So first of all, the net force 
is equal to all of the forces added together with the idea of vectors in mind. So with our free body diagram, one thing we should be doing um, as we do more of these problems and as they become more difficult is to have a little indicator to ourselves of which way acceleration is pointing and the fact that that's going to be our positive direction. So when we are writing out the net forces, it will always, always be the forces in the direction of acceleration, in this case 250 newtons, minus all of the forces opposite the direction of acceleration, in this case 222.5 newtons. Now it is important for us to keep in mind that this is different than how we were treating positive and negative in chapters 2 and 3. In chapters 2 and 3 we just always chose down to be the negative direction and we set the acceleration of gravity um, to be negative. In this case we are always always going to focus on the arrow directions and the arrows that are in the same direction will have the same sign. The arrows that point in opposite directions will have opposite signs and that's how we want to approach the problem. All right, so this net force here, when we put that into our calculator, is 27.5 newtons. So that's the left part of the equation we now have a number for. The problem is we still don't have the mass. The other not true problem-solving equation, but still something that we had in our slides already, and we'll see this all of the time, is that the force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity. So we have 222.5 is equal to the unknown mass that we're about to need times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8. So if we divide both sides by 9.8, then we will get that the mass is equal to 22.7 kilograms. All right, so let's change color here so we can kind of see what's going on. We have the mass, and that came from using our understanding of pounds, that that is a weight, it is a force, and using our understanding of the force of gravity specifically. And we also have that the net force is equal to 27.5 newtons. So now, when we are really using in its entirety Newton's second law, we're plugging in two numbers and solving for the third. Times A. So we just divide both sides by 22.7. And we get 1.21 1.2 meters per second squared. And that becomes our final, final answer. We can write up if we want to. The fact that we drew it here is really the key part that we need somewhere in the problem to indicate the direction. But it was also true that in the wording we say, find the acceleration of the block upward. The amount is 1.2 meters per second squared, and we were told the direction is up. The more of these problems that we do, the quicker it will be to see the similar structure underlying each one. So this very first problem, maybe it seems kind of confusing, but I bet if after you watch all the other examples you come back to this one, it will be kind of really clear and comfortable to you why we did the steps uh, in the order that we did. So we will have plenty of examples for chapter four when dealing with forces, and I look forward to working with you throughout this chapter.